So, you're thinking of buying an MG. It's a good choice of car. So let's have a little look round one, see any problems with them and how practical they are. This is the MG TF. They also did the MGF, an earlier version, which the ride on them was a little bit softer because of the hydro gas suspension that they used. On these they used uh, proper suspension as you might call it with springs and it's a harder ride but then again it is a sports car you can get softer springs for them if that's your thing but it's a proper British mid-engine sports car and for the price you can't do much better Some people prefer the MX-5 that Mazda do, but it's a front engine car, a lot of people reckon they're better, but if you speak to the true purists, they'll say they're not. Looks is down to individual taste. Some people prefer to look at the MX-5, obviously a lot of people think that the uh, MGTF and the F is a much prettier car. Not only is it prettier, it's quicker and it's better handling as well. Let's have a look round, shall we? There's several different models. Some have the front fog lights, some don't. The mesh in the grille is an added extra. They all come with various different styles of wheels, depending on what model you're after. This particular one is a special edition called Cool Blue. There is about 600 of these made. This is the 1800cc version which has a blue roof with it. They also did a 1600cc uh, version. Also had the blue roof, had the blue Alicanta seats in it, but quite a few of them were actually silver and not blue. So we'll have a little look round the car. It has vents on both sides. On this side it happens to have a cold air feed to the air filter. It's a modification on the car which uh, you may be able to see in a second when we open the boot. The inside of the car really back to basics and in some ways it's really nice. Heater controls, again you can get all sorts of uh, different parts for these. You can get different style knobs, you can get them in aluminium. For the dials you can get chrome surrounds for them, you can get different style steering wheels and you can even swap around the rev counter and speedo to the very latest type, although it takes a little bit of fiddling. There's a windbreak that folds down and again you can have roll hoops, you can have perspex windbreaks, the, the options are just endless. It has a nice cover so that when the roof's down it looks all nice and tidy. Same as most sports cars really, they all have it. It has a really nice looking filler cap, if that's your thing. And as you see the boot has vents in it, that's because it's a mid-engined car and this allows the engine to let some of the heat out of it. Again, some people put extra vents in, something a little bit different. Everyone likes to personalise their cars. There's twin exhausts at the rear. You can also get a quad exhaust. All very different styles. Performance exhaust and a complete stainless steel system. A complete stainless steel system will cost you round about the £400 mark. Most of them will come with a lifetime guarantee and it's a modification that a lot of the owners do. So, 
Would it be a practical car to use on an everyday basis? Yeah, I do believe it is. And many people use them every day. Going to and from work, going to the shops. And talking of having to go to the shops, could you go away, do a week shopping? Could you go away for a week in an MG to go on holiday? Yeah, it's something that you couldn't do in the MX-5. So the MX-5 just doesn't have the same amount of space as the MG. So the MG is a much more practical car. Let's have a look at the boot. That's the boot space you have. No, okay. Not super huge. But you definitely get a, enough in there for two people for a week of weight. Not a problem. And now for that all important 1800cc fuel injected engine. It's 135 horsepower. The common mod is to have a cold air feed to the air filter like that. This uh, gives it a little bit more punch and increases performance just fractionally. But it's a modification most people will do and it's a well worth and cheap modification to do. It also gives a lovely induction noise when you're accelerating. Well, we're looking at the engine and you're thinking of buying one. Everyone talks about head gasket failure, or as it's commonly known on the forums, HGF. Don't worry about it. It's not a massive problem. It's something that's really overstated. Yes, when the MGs were being built, the gasket on them, they didn't do them too great in the way that they were made. So there's been improvements and upgrades. Some cars have been done, others haven't. If yours has, it will normally have the paperwork to say that it's been done. But then again, it isn't a major problem. A mobile mechanic will come out and he'll do that, probably take two to three hours to do, and he's gonna charge you, including all the parts that you need, say somewhere in the region of 300 pounds. You'll get a new drop rated head gasket and you won't have any problems. This car's done 94,000 miles now. I've had it for almost a year. Never have a problem. It's been sat in traffic, hasn't overheated. Don't worry about head gasket failure and all the horror stories. You always hear about the bad ones. You never hear about the good ones. So just don't be put off by it. Enjoy the car. If it happens, it happens. It's not a major issue. There's loads of things that you can do. That's the bonnet release. You can get those, you can chrome them. At the back of the lights aren't covered. You can get covers for these. They're not much money. I think they're about £25 for the pair. It just tidies the back up. And while we're in the boot, whatever you do, do not leave the keys in the boot and close it. There's no other way of opening the boot without the key. It has been done. People have left their cars with the boot open, done something, put the keys down inside the boot, shut the boot, and that's it. You can't get in. What a lot of owners are having to do is smash a back light to gain access and get in. What a good modification is, is on the lock, you can buy a solenoid and a switch. They're about 15 quid, some places charge quite a bit more. But 15 quid, fit it yourself, they're not a, bit, a hard thing to do. And you can have a remote switch inside the car so that you've got that safety of if you do lock your cars, car keys in the boot, push a button inside the boot, at least you can get your keys back. 
it's something that this car hasn't got, but it will have soon. You notice this car hasn't got a boot spoiler. It's the other models that have the boot spoiler, the trophy models. They're 160 horsepower, but you can put a boot spoiler on, and I think it tidies it up a bit. If you notice on the boot, there's a slight lip. That's a spoiler in itself. It was a modification from the MGF because at high speeds, the MGF tended to get a little bit skittish. So when they did the TF, they put the boot spoiler on, add a little bit more downforce, and it's a car that really does handle very, very well. On the handle in front, tyres have been a very, very big talking point. Some tyres really don't suit the car and they can make the handling very poor indeed. This particular car is fitted with Falcon tyres, but apparently Toyos, people are very happy with as well. And it is a car that really does handle well. It handles a lot better than the MX-5. It's a real exciting, fun car to drive. It likes to be driven hard. And for an 1800cc car, You've got 135 horsepower. It can be remapped and tuned. Some people without too much problem have got 200 horsepower from the cars. There's versions of them with turbos on now. And even someone, at least one person, has fitted a Honda engine in the rear. It gives it some real poke as a two litre engine. Moving around the car, the roof is really easy to put up and down. One person can do it on their own. It's not electric. Two catches up by the top of the windscreen, fold it down. There can be a little problem and it's a minor niggle with the roof going down. All it is, it gets, as you're putting it down, it tends to get a bit stuck. There's some fabric bands that you can buy that will prevent this from happening. I don't bother. All I do is between two of the metal bars that the roof cover, if you push the material outwards the roof will fold down nice and comfortably. It's not a major problem. Having a look from the driver's side, white dials, all the boy racers used to do that with the Ford Escorts. It's a nice touch. At night time it shines a lovely orangey colour and again, many people change these with LEDs. Even the interior lights, you've got them in the footwell. And you've got lights in the rear view mirror as well. People change these for blue, reds. It's entirely up to you. People even put Lambo style doors on them. Again, it's a modification that's about 400 quid. It's not expensive at all. Right, let's walk round to the front of the car. I think it's a real nice, pretty looking little car. It's fantastic with a roof down. It's a practical car. It has its own followers. Some people like it, some people don't. But if you're looking at this, I take it you're interested in buying one. They do corrode. And things to look out for are wishbones. There's a design fault in them. They corrode and they can corrode quite badly. It's an MOT failure. Also, the seals on them can corrode as well. On this car, someone's wax oil, all the seals and all the underneath of the body. So the rust ha hasn't been too much of a problem when I got this. But around the air vent, the paint was bubbling a bit where there's a poor repair and on the other side there's a hole in the sill which has had to have a, a piece welded in. Not a major thing, um, 40 pound it was done. I resprayed it, it still needs finishing off, it's a good repair that should last for ages. If you need parts for the car 
again plentiful there's upgraded parts there's standard parts they're all available and if you do have major problems with the subframes of the car they're easy to drop out the front and rear you can redo them up they're now a collector's car they're a classic and this car on classic insurance cost me a bit over a hundred pounds on limited mileage now that obviously depends on where you live and what your driving records like but they are going to be a collectible car they're cheap the earlier F's which are a real nice car can be bought with service history real good cracking little car with a year's MOT for as little as £350 if you like you can buy one of these in this sort of condition for round about a starting price of £800 you're going to pay more in the summer that's obvious but if you can hang on till the winter when the prices will come down a bit for around about £800 you'll get a nice little car and something to look forward to you can tinker with them they're not massively high tech so if you're mechanically minded and that's what you want to do go ahead let's have a look under the front of the car and see what's there we're talking about space and what there is Well, without the spare wheel there's plenty here that's where the spare wheel would normally go but normally now they've been replaced with a puncture repair kit there it is, although I'll keep a bit of WD-40 in there at the minute do these cars have ABS you might be wondering some do, some don't that's where the ABS would go in that little spot there so if you want to know you'll have the ABS part and the brake pipes coming off of it it sits just there this car hasn't got ABS in my view it ain't a problem ABS doesn't make you stop quicker all ABS does is allow you when you're turning a corner if you brake very hard if you would normally skid you would go straight on. ABS allows you to turn that corner as it puts the brakes on and off, on and off, on and off very quickly. So for me ABS isn't a great big deal. If it's got it, it's got it. If it hasn't, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Under here, real basic again. You've got your brake servo and brake fluid washer bottle for windscreen wipers, fuse box and a battery. If you need to put more luggage in the car you can always put it in there. As I say you can buy a spare wheel again a wheel and tyre can be had for £40 so again not a real big issue it's not an expensive car All across the front while we're here many people change all the screws and nuts and bolts and bolts for stainless steel it's something that is a good idea just because some of the nuts the bolts they will go rusty and they can be difficult to get out there's a lot of bling you can do with these cars if you want to the choice is entirely yours some people change the washer nozzles because they say that the washers don't come out quick enough for them again Citroen ones apparently fit very well and also work very well I'm happy with mine at the moment might change them at a later date so these cars fairly cheap you can go more up the expensive side and you can spend £4,000 upwards or let's say from a thousand pound upwards a thousand pounds will buy you a real nice tidy little car it won't be a show winning car but it will be tidy 
if you're going to spend the extra money, do have a good look around it. Even take someone that you know. What about economy? If you're going to use this as an everyday car, yeah, I get about 40 to the gallon out of this. Just pottering about quite happily. Obviously if you put your foot down, which I do like to do, because it does sound lovely, especially in a tunnel, has a lovely raspy exhaust note. If you put your foot down, you're not going to get quite that mileage. But everyone that owns one says regularly around 40 miles to the gallon, which for a sports car is really, really good. It's a cheap car to run, it's a cheap car to buy. It doesn't mean to say that it's a rubbish car. It's not at all. An MX-5 of the same year is going to cost you quite a bit more. I don't think it, the MX-5 is quite such a nice car. When I was going to buy one of these, I looked at the MX-5, put them side by side. I preferred this one. Other people prefer the MX-5. It's not a bad car, just not the car for me. It doesn't light my fire, if you like. So, what else can we say about the MG? It is a proper British mid-engined sports car. You're not going to get a mid-engined sports car for that sort of money. If you want something that's mid-engined now as a sports car and you don't want an MG, what are your choices? Well, if you've got a thousand pound to spend, not a great deal. Porsche, not only they're a bit juicy, expensive to buy, expensive to insure, and expensive to run. Your other choices are cars like Ferraris. You, you're just not going to get that amount of fun for that price. And there's plenty of MG owners that do have the more prestigious sports cars. They've got an MG because they prefer the MG to their Porsche or their Ferrari. This one's a limited edition. It's cool blue, as I said, about 600 made. There's anniversary editions. Obviously these cars will be a little bit more expensive, but if there's one that needs repairs, they can be had for cheaper money if you're willing to do the work. They come in various colors. There's a couple of different types of blue. There's yellow, which they did for the trophy cars. There's silvers, greys, blacks. There's always a few for sale. The anniversary cars and limited editions are a little bit harder to find. But if you want something like that, they are out there. They do sell. The prices of them are cheap at the moment, but it's not going to be like that for a long, very long time. People were scrapping these cars for reasons of head gasket failure, which is real sort of crazy when you think about it really. As I said before, it's not a massive problem. The cars are getting less and less, and as a result, the price is going to go up and up. And like any classic car, if you look at some of the older MGs, they're fetching some real quite high prices now, and these will follow suit. So it's a fun, everyday car that you can hang on to, and it will only increase in value as long as it's looked after. I think if you bought one now for around a thousand pound mark, even less, in a year's time, you could sell it for the same money, that's if you wanted to, or even maybe make a bit of profit on it. Many people say that the driving position is too high up. I don't know what that's about. I find it perfectly all right for me, and it's a comfortable car as well. So that's the review on an MGTF. I'd suggest if you're thinking of getting one, yeah, do it. Take it for a test drive. It'll put a smile on your face, and that's why people like them. It's a car to get in and not go from A to B, but go from A to K and go around the long way. You'll find yourself when you go out in it, when you go to work in it, 
you won't go the direct route on a day like today where it's nice and bright and sunny. We're out in the countryside and when you go to work you'll be taking the long route. It might only take you 10 or 20 minutes to get to work but when you're out in somewhere like this with a car like this it's going to take you at least twice as long and on the way home it might even take you longer. So take the plunge don't be worried about the scare stories, you always hear the bad things about cars and not much about the good things. They are really good little cars. They are reliable, there's nothing wrong with the reliability of them. And like any car of this sort of age, yeah there's going to be a few niggly problems. But you'll get that with any car. And to be fair, for a car that is 15 years old, it's in very good condition people do tend to look after them. So go on, treat yourself for summer, buy an MGF or a model like this, the TF, you can't go much wrong really. Thanks for watching the video.